Hey guys, welcome back to another video on Kubernetes tutorial series. In the previous video, I have shown you how to create EKS cluster on AWS using AWS Management Console. Along with that, I have explained you a few more things on AWS EKS service like introduction, benefits and different types of API endpoints. In this video, I will show you the same Kubernetes cluster creation but this time using EKSCTL command. Related document and links are mentioned in the description below. Refer those links to understand this session much better from basics. So make use of it. If you are watching our tutorial videos for the first time and not yet subscribed, do subscribe now to not miss any interesting videos and click near the bell icon so that you will get all the notifications immediately for the videos that we upload. Let's get started. Prerequisites to create EKS cluster on AWS is we should have a AWS CLA access with admin privileges and we need an instance from there only we will be creating and managing our AKS cluster so that instance should have a AWS CLA utility installed if you don't know how to create and install AWS CLA I will give you the link in the description and finally SSH key this is actually optional it is needed only when you are going to allow remote SSH to worker nodes if not you can just ignore it steps involved Step 1. We will install EKSCTL and kubectl command. Step 2. Creating EKS cluster using EKSCTL utility. Step 3. We'll deploy a demo application on top of the EKS cluster we have created on AWS environment. Straight away log into the instance. Already I have installed AWS CLA. Just make sure you have the working AWS CLA access. AWS IAM list user and AWS SDS get caller identity just to make sure you have working AWS CLA access. Then we will move on to the step one that is installing EKSCTL command. So here is the EKSCTL package using curl command. I'm downloading to my instance and just move that utility to the binary locations and just type EKSCTL version. Yes, it's 0 0.19.0. And also we need kubectl command and this is a URL to download it. Once that is done, just make the utility to executable and move it to the binary location. So you will have the kubectl command now. kubectl version. So it is listing my client version details, but not the server versions. For that, we need, we should have the EKS cluster ready. So let's create the EKS cluster. But before that, if you want to allow remote SSH access to the worker nodes, then you should have the SSH key ready. And this is the command I'll be using to create EKS cluster. The command is ekctl create cluster along with we need to give the options like region name and name of the cluster, node group name and the node type and the number of nodes, minimum nodes and maximum nodes and these are for auto scaling and SSH access. If you want to enable the remote access to the worker nodes, then we need to enable this SSH access and you need to provide key which should be used. If you don't want to allow the remote access, then you can remove that SSH access and SSH key options and hyphen hyphen manage so that you will be able to manage your EKS cluster. So this is a simple command to create the EKS cluster. So just copy and paste. That's it. It started creating the cluster for you. If you see the output of these command, it is creating the version with 0.19.0 and on the region US East one, setting the availability zones for each subnets and allowing the public key and using the Kubernetes version 1.15, that is a default one. And still we have the newer version like uh, 1.16, but this is the default version for now. And it is creating the cluster as a name you have defined in the command ekis-cluster-demo. So this will take approximately 10 to 15 minutes. That's it. Our AKS cluster is ready. So you can log into your AWS console if you have login access. I could see the two nodes that are created by the EKS ETL command. Just make sure everything is created and go to EKS. So this is the cluster we have created, EKS cluster demo and the version 1.15. Status is ready. Even the node group of compute is also been created. So everything is created perfectly. Let's try to deploy a demo application on that particular case environment. So already I have downloaded my 
demo application from a github repository this is a two tier architecture you have a front end a note application and the back end you have mongodb on the front end service type is node port so i'll be changing that to load balancer so that aws will issue and load balancer ip for this front end and mongodb is a back end for this application let it be the cluster ip let's apply this yaml files but before that let us confirm services i don't have any services being configured except the default one and kubectl get nodes yes i have two nodes there is no parts and i have only the default namespace let's apply the yaml files kubectl apply hyphen f mongo.yaml that is a backend so deployment and services are created now let's deploy the frontend yaml file that's it let's check the parts so mongodb and knode parts are getting created and verify the service the knode is a load balancer type that has got the external ip from the aws so this would be our load balancer you can just use curl to confirm whether our application is accessible from this instance it is not working should be a name resolution problem it will take some couple of minutes for the name resolution Yeah, now it's resolving to IP address. Now you can use curl command to confirm. Yes, I'm able to access my application using curl command within the VPC because this instance is also exists in the same VPC. Now you can configure route 53 with some domain to be forwarded to that ELB so that you'll be able to access your application from outside the network. Go to any browser and use the ELB on the address bar. That's it. Our demo application is accessible from outside the network so you have many other options can be used along with the ekctl command like you can change node group name you can change the type of the nodes number of nodes auto scaling options but i have used a limited option just to show you how it can be created hope you have got an idea how to create the eks cluster on aws using ekctl command in the next video i will show you how to upgrade our eks version to the newer version till then keep practicing and have fun how did you feel? Is it helpful? Appreciate our efforts in the comment section below. Hit like button, share with your friends about us, subscribe our channel to get further updates, stay connected with us on social networking sites. For more free tutorials, visit our website www.lanetiguide.net.